Hey friends, Graham here from recordingrevolution.com and today let's talk about how you can master your own songs at home in 10 minutes. Now, I'm not saying we want to master quickly. I'm just saying that it shouldn't take you long because it is a very straightforward process, assuming you've got a great recording and a great sounding mix, which is why I spend a lot of time on this channel talking about how to record well and mix well. So when you get to mastering, you're not having to reinvent the wheel. Mastering should be the most straightforward of all the steps when it comes to making great music. It's the mixing and the recording that are the really in-depth places. So if you have followed along with my most recent series, How to Record a Song from Scratch and How to Mix a Song from Scratch, then you've been seeing and hearing the evolution of this song idea I had. And the song's called Bury It, and it's in front of you right now as just the final mix. So this is bounced down and rendered down into a stereo 24-bit wave file, uh, and this is what the mix sounded like. Now, let's talk about the final step. Before I release this out into the world, what I want to do is make sure it can hang with real music out there. And so in this video, I want to show you how straightforward it is. I'm going to show you the four tools that I use traditionally when mastering, four plugins, and they're very simple, and you probably already have them for free in your DAW, and then one important trick. Four tools, one trick. Here we go. Let's start with the trick because that's the most important one, and that is referencing a professional master. Referencing a song that's already out there in the real world, maybe it's on the radio, maybe it's your favorite artist, that you know sounds great, that is a similar genre and similar instrumentation to your song that you're working on, as a comparison to know what the benchmark is. What should your mix sound close to? Not sound exactly like, but sound close to. And here is what I'm going to do in my mastering session. I've got my song here, but I've pulled in also a Maroon 5 song. I think I've got a riff rock track uh, that sounds got, it's got that Maroon 5 vibe to it. At least when I was working on, I heard this song in particular, Wake Up Call, um, off of one of my favorite albums that they've done. And I want to use this as a benchmark in terms of tone. Okay, tone, not loudness, tone. So this is very important. I've pulled in this Maroon 5 song and I've had to pull the volume way, way down on the fader because of course this has been mastered. It's gonna be way louder than my mix. So what I've done is literally by ear, pull the fader down and flipped back and forth between my mix and this mastered song until they feel like and sound like they're about the same volume so I can have a fair comparison because if I don't do that, if I listen to the wake up call song and it sounds louder than my mix, I will prefer it and I'll think it's better than my mix. And it'll be not only disheartening, but it'll be misleading because louder isn't better, but our ears think it's better. And so we don't make the right decision. So I need to make the loudness level the same on each track and then I can have a fair comparison. So here we are with the volume down on the Maroon 5 song. And my song. All right, similar volumes now. But now I can finally hear the differences and I can listen to the reference and say, what do I like about the reference? What do I like about the Maroon 5 song that my mix is missing? And when I listen to that, the first thing I hear is a little bit more uh, crispness in the guitars, uh, a little more forward sounding in the vocal maybe, and a little less round. I think my mix sounds a little rounder. So when I listen to Wake Up Call, and flip over. My mix sounds fine, it just sounds a little less bright, a little less, less in your face, it's a little more rounded off. So, now I have something to shoot for. Not that I need to copy this, I just wanna get a little closer to this song. So the first of the four tools is an EQ. So simple, but so powerful. And so what I've done here is four EQ moves. And I literally did these just by listening back and forth, and I'm trying to clean up a couple of things. 
I used this low mid frequency here to scoop out a little bit of 200 because that felt like the woofy sort of area of my mix. Take a listen. That kind of sounded like the woofy area. So what I did is I carved out about one and a half dB of that. Why one and a half dB? Well, when you're mastering, you want to do real subtle moves, more subtle than you would in mixing, ideally, because this is going to affect the entire mix and you want it to still sound natural. So I took out that. I thought my guitar sounded a little too uh, fizzy compared to the guitars on the Maroon 5 song. And it's probably because of the virtual amps that I, I played through, if you saw those videos. Um, I think virtual amps, as good as they sound, sometimes sound a little, the giveaway is some of the fizziness in the 2 to 3K range. So I actually took out a little bit of 2.6K, and I felt like that cleaned up the guitars a bit. And then I did two boosts. I did a, a boost at 8.5K, which I think opened up some of the sizzle in the song, in the guitars and the vocals in a good way, not the the bad cheapness of the virtual amp but the good sound and then also did a little bit of a boost at around one and a half k to bring out some of the energy in the guitars so here's the before and after with the eq before Very subtle, but I think it cleans it up a lot nicer, and it sounds a little closer to the Maroon 5 song. The second of the four tools is a compressor. And this is a, a cool free compressor I got with my little Scarlet Solo interface from Focusrite. It came with some bundled plugins, uh, absolutely free. This is a recreation of the Focusrite Red hardware compressor. And uh, I grabbed this one just because of the dry wet knob. If you have a compressor that has a bland knob or a dry wet knob or a mix knob, what that means is that you can actually do some parallel compression inside of the plugin. And this is going to be used to give me some more smack on my song without actually having to overly compress this mix. So what I've got is basically a, an aggressive uh, compression. I actually used a preset called Drum Kick. And that created a real smacking drum uh, compression sound. It's three to one ratio, fast attack, fast release. Um, at least that's where I set it. And at full compression, it would sound like this. Versus off. That sounds cool and smacky, but it's just, it's too squashed. So I got a really cool smacking sound that made the drums pop and made everything just like awesome, but obviously way too much. And then I dialed the dry wet knob down to about, you know, 30% or so. So now it's mostly 60% the uncompressed mix and 30% the compressed mix. And here we are. And you can just play to taste till that sounds cool to you. So a little parallel compression um, where it smacks is a really great way to bring out some energy in mastering. And it's nice and subtle, and it's made a huge difference. So far, really, you've just got two plugins, EQ and compression. And what I think I've done is gotten this mix a little closer to the tone and energy of the Maroon 5 song. So let's go back and forth um, with the plugins first. I'm going to take off the EQ and compression. On, and just hear what we've done to my mix, and then I'll compare it to the Maroon 5 song. Again, is this a drastic change? 
No, it still sounds like my mix. I think it's got more energy and more balance and uh, tonally uh, than it used to. So let's compare it now to the Maroon 5 song. There you go. I think it's closer in terms of the tone. Now, the final step, we got to get this mix to be louder. Uh, and this is a, a this could be a whole nother video. There, a lot of my friends have done countless pieces of content on the loudness wars and ideal loudness, and I don't have the time to go into a lot of it there. I'm going to just say one thing and then show you how I would master this, and that is that loudness is less important these days than you think because Platforms like Spotify, YouTube, iTunes are doing auto volume correction, auto volume normalizing, uh, where they will turn down louder songs. YouTube does that, and they'll make your songs that you're listening to as you're cycling through random songs on Spotify be close to the exact same volume so that a song in 1982 has a similar volume to something in 1999 versus something in 2015 or 2017 it's gonna make them all a similar volume. So loudness is no longer as important as it used to be. And actually, really squashed songs don't sound as musical and punchy as more dynamic songs. So my only thing here is I wouldn't say, don't worry about getting it as loud as you possibly can in your DAW because on platforms where people are probably gonna hear your music, like if you upload a music video on YouTube, or if you play it on Spotify or on iTunes where all my music goes, then you're gonna be fine. It's gonna sit with all the big boys. So. The tools that you need, though, to get some more loudness out of this mix are a limiter, which your DAW will have, and ideally some kind of VU meter or RMS meter, and a lot of DAWs have these free. Pro Tools doesn't do the best job. They've added some over the years. I picked one up a long time ago uh, from Klanghelm. This is a, like a $12 uh, VU meter, basically, that I use because I it looks like the old school meter. It's very easy to read, and so I'm going to use that as my meter. It doesn't do anything to the audio. And then I'm going to use a plug in here uh, called Maxim, which is a limiter that comes free with Pro Tools. So the goal here is simply to get more volume. And the question is how much volume and how do you know you've got it loud enough? And like I said, there are a million different answers to that question. And every song is a different loudness. So you can't really give a one size fits all. Uh, my buddy Ian Shepard, who runs a fantastic site, Production Advice, he recommends using VU meters at around minus 10. So I think sort of minus 10 as an average volume place for most of the mix is a going to be a loud yet still dynamic mix. I've definitely mastered things that are closer to minus 8 uh, or minus 7. I've done things that are closer to minus 12, but minus 10 is a good place to shoot for. This is not peak volume, okay? This is not looking at uh, getting just everything, just peaking at minus 10, that would be super quiet. Okay, if you look at my mix, light it up and let it burn. my mix is already peaking louder than that, like minus five. The point isn't to get it to peak at minus 10, it's to get the average volume uh, to be around minus 10. So what I'm going to do is just show you what I've done on this limiter here. I'll back it off here and start over. But with the limiter, I set the ceiling. I pull the ceiling down to minus 0.5 or minus 1 dB. Uh, it'll give a little bit of wiggle room in case any kind of processing to MP3 or anything actually adds some volume by accident. I'll leave a little bit of wiggle room. And then you just pull the threshold down. And I watch my meter here. And I'm going to see if this needle can get close to zero. Zero on this meter calibrated to minus 10 just means that this is minus 10. This is going to be my sweet spot. I want to get the needle right here at zero because I've said I want minus 10 to be zero. So I'm going to pull the threshold down. All it's going to do is add gain to my mix. It's not doing any compression until I get a little bit louder. You'll start to see attenuation here, and that's when it's going to turn down some peaks. But most of the gain is just going to be straight up volume boost. Here we go. Light it up and let it burn.
hopefully that didn't blast your ears. But there you go. Uh, the loudest part of the song, it was kissing right here at zero dB, which on the VU meter, which I've set to minus 10. So that means that the average volume on these loud parts is around minus 10, which is good. You saw about one and a half dB of gain reduction on whatever the loudest peak was. So very, very conservative there. It's not doing really a whole lot of compression. It's going to keep the energy and dynamics and punch of my mix, which is going to be awesome for making my mix really still sound rocking at quiet volumes. And of course, it'll sound nice and loud. Now, this is to me is a place where I'm feeling really good about the song. I've used a reference track to give me a point of reference to get sort of my overall tone and make sure I'm in the ballpark of a similar song. That was the trick. And then the four tools, I used EQ to just subtly enhance the, the tone. I used uh, a mix knob on a compressor to give some more smack while still sounding nice and dynamic. And then I used a limiter and a VU meter or RMS meter to measure my volume and get more level without squashing my mix. And in the end, what we've done is really changed the, the mix a lot from what it was. Now it's a louder, more balanced, more punchy version of my mix that still sounds like my mix. There you go. I hope that gives you a little insight, a quick insight into how to master your songs. Literally, this could take you 10 minutes. If you pull in a reference track and then immediately grab your EQ for about two minutes, a couple of minutes on compression, and then a couple of minutes on getting your limiter set while watching your RMS meter, within 10 minutes, you've got this thing ready to go. You're not trying to do an overhaul here. You're trying to subtly enhance it. Now, I want to give you something before you go, because mastering is a critical step, of course, but it's only one of six steps in the music making process. If you have an idea for a song and you want to share it with the world, there are six steps that your music's going to have to go through in order to get sounding great. Mastering is the final step, but it's only one of six. Recording is one of them, yes. Mixing is one of them, yes. But that's only two or three steps of the six. I don't want you to miss any of these steps. And what I've done is put together an entire guide for you that's so helpful called My Six Steps to a Radio Ready Song Guide. It's absolutely free. It's packed full of tips tricks and really a framework step by step that you can follow whenever you've got a song idea and you want to get it going and share it with the world. So to download it, just go to radioreadyguide.com. I'll put the link here in the video and in the description box. radioreadyguide.com. It's a free PDF, real simple. It's a solid read, not too long, but it's chock full of good stuff that I think will really, really help you. We cover mastering a bit there. We cover all six steps so that you have really everything you need to start making music and not get lost or skip a step, which would really, really hinder your music from sounding as good as it possibly can. So download that. Check it out. Subscribe to these videos if they are helpful to you. Give me a like or a thumbs up if you think this has been a helpful video for you. Uh, looking forward to seeing your comments as to what you think about the mastering process, how you like to master, and hopefully this has given you some ideas when it's time to master your song. That's it for today. I got to go do some other stuff. I will see you on another video real soon.